So welcome, Elena, please. The floor is yours. Yes. Should be good now, right? Good. Hi, hi everyone, and uh, hi Anna. Thank you for uh, for the introduction. Uh, this is a, a short talk. Um, I uh, I promise. Um, and uh, the concept uh, behind this is to share with you uh, some propositions about the study of memes uh, as network uh, derivatives. Um, so the, the question uh, that I'd like to uh, address uh, would be if we uh, think uh, of memes uh, as this uh, engaging, uh, spreadable, uh, interlinked and uh, cross uh, hashtagged uh, material, uh, material uh, that uh, circulates um, across uh, the internet and is driven um, by platforms. Um, uh, what is it uh, exactly uh, that we are studying? Um, in a way, uh, the notion uh, of derivatives, uh, at least as discussed in the context of uh, data uh, capitalism critique, uh, suggests uh, that we are studying uh, repetitions in networks as a logic um, of transformation um, or extension um, of relations between entities. Uh, the derivative logic of the web is what facilitates connections uh, through repetition. Uh, in this sense, uh, both uh, memes and, and also to some extent um, uh, platforms uh, can be seen um, as its, uh, well, let's say, important uh, materializations. Uh, content uh, that circulates uh, through our habitual acts of social networking is uh, data intensive, uh, clickbait um, generates clicks, uh, memes assemble and amplify different cultures of use. Um, hashtags allow us to um, navigate uh, these environments um, and make them uh, searchable and shareable. Uh, memes also transform as, um, as they circulate uh, through our repeated acts of engagement. Uh, Hito Steyer's uh, poor image um, remixed, uh, copied uh, and pasted into various uh, channels of distribution uh, is what uh, generates uh, value and, and this uh, engaging uh, potential um, within the digital economy of attention um, has become uh, more uh, pervasive uh, with, uh, with the rise of social media platforms. Uh, so uh, seen conceptually, uh, one of the main starting points here uh, is that network culture derives from, uh, but also drives uh, platform society and this twofold uh, dynamic animates uh, this complex uh, uh, socio-technological architecture within which, uh, which uh, value uh, is uh, extracted uh, out of uh, intensive participation. Uh, content uh, that we encounter on social media platforms is designed uh, to capture our attention. I mean, at least I think it's, it's the main intention behind uh, social uh, networking. Uh, it can pr provoke us uh, into creative uh, use uh, and uh, distract us uh, into uh, quantifiable um, uh, actions uh, of uh, clicking, uh, liking, uh, uh, reblocking, uh, sharing, etc. Uh, all this uh, happens at the same time. Uh, and uh, continuously um, produces uh, uh, data uh, through a correlation uh, of user activities. Um, in words of Wendy Chan, uh, this is also what makes networks work uh, as potential uh, interactions based on repeated past interactions, derivative uh, in terms of uh, persistent 
use uh, and high uh, density of connections uh, that in the next step uh, uh, translates into um, well algorithmic uh, recommendations uh, for trending or popular uh, content. And this has uh, consequences uh, for the ways in which uh, content uh, is shared and mimetic communities take shape. Um, on uh, TikTok, uh, for instance, uh, the most uh, popular hashtags um, are for your page and uh, for you. Uh, these two uh, like literally are attached to almost every video. Uh, they appear literally in, in every uh, uh, data set, uh, which is a specificity uh, of this platform uh, that comes along uh, with users' speculations uh, that with for your page tags, their content uh, is more likely to appear uh, in TikTok's uh, recommendation feed. And, and uh, co-hashtag networks uh, like, like this one uh, uh, reveal uh, uh, this viral mentality uh, of the platform uh, regardless uh, of the context and especially uh, in the context uh, of uh, mimetic uh, events uh, here uh, connected to uh, Trump's uh, infamous uh, recommendations uh, for uh, treating coronavirus with uh, light and uh, disinfectants. Uh, uh, but okay, uh, at the same time, networks uh, that make platform content engaging are far from being straightforward in their impact. Social media are no intermediaries that simply transmit or host uh, all this content that we upload. Uh, they are infrastructural agents uh, involving uh, multiple uh, uh, technical uh, layers of mediation, uh, complex cultural ecosystems and uh, commercial uh, interests. And thinking uh, this framework uh, through its networked qualities, uh, through its online uh, groundedness, uh, which is uh, the main proposition of digital methods, uh, requires approaching data, not so much through its quantity, uh, but through its uh, situatedness. So what can we learn uh, from, from the circulation of content online? On social media platforms, every click, every like, uh, every uh, meme uh, that we share registers um, as uh, interactivity. And if we engage empirically, uh, with the practicalities of online infrastructures, we have to deal with the fact that when we extract data, we first um, uh, engage with no more than, well, let's say snapshots uh, of interactions um, uh, as they evolve. Uh, and second, uh, that these snapshots uh, um, or traces uh, are never neutral. Uh, data that we extract is never raw. Uh, it is pre-structured uh, or grammatized uh, by platforms and uh, cooked, so to speak, uh, in assemblies of social practices and online interfaces uh, through which we engage. Uh, this, of course, is not uh, breaking news. Uh, the logic of repurposing uh, different digital objects uh, to understand um, how they are shaped uh, uh, by a network uh, of data practices is by all means an affordance uh, of digital methods perspective, uh, but it's also um, its challenge. Uh, access to data through platform APIs uh, can be open today and uh, closed uh, tomorrow. Uh, how good your data is depends not on the logic of uh, bigger is better, uh, rather it's about uh, taking seriously the embeddedness uh, of data in the conditions, but also in the instabilities um, of the mediums uh, and uh, the issues uh, in question. Uh, oftentimes, it is uh, precisely the richness and the porosity uh, of the context uh, that shapes our research uh, interests in the process um, of, of mapping and remapping data. Uh, so, um, let me just give you another example. This is a rank flow uh, registering 
uh, the positions of threads on 4chan's poll boards over time as renders uh, visible by 4chan's uh, sorting um, mechanisms. Uh, this research was performed by Sel Hagen and Open Intelligence Lab. Uh, the context of interactions is uh, like the aftermath of uh, Trump uh, election back then. Uh, and, and what I think is really significant about it is that it showcases uh, how the dynamics of mimetic transactions uh, shift in accordance with the economy of ephemeral attention. If a thread receives a low number of comments, it drops uh, in its rank, which is uh, represented through these uh, blue lines. And as soon as a thread reaches a low enough position, uh, 4chan uh, archives it, uh, disallowing uh, new comments and, uh, and enacting, uh, I think, very effectively uh, uh, this rise and fall uh, of the meme magic, uh, so to speak. So, how memes operate has to do a lot uh, with uh, the distinctive communicative qualities of platforms and the ways they uh, redistribute content and uh, user attention. Uh, and this leads me to my second point. Platform spaces are temporal uh, territories. Uh, they matter because they repeat. Uh, and in terms of methods, it means that content and context uh, information and interaction go hand in hand, uh, which invites uh, uh, this um, uh, iterative uh, uh, process of working with data. It implies um, uh, emergent uh, knowledge uh, rather uh, than static correlations. Uh, time and specificity is not only an indicator of uh, contextual uh, effects, it can be also seen as an indicator of uh, value or relevance. Um, and this has uh, several uh, dimensions. First, we know uh, that platforms value some forms of engagement over um, others, depending uh, on the intensity um, of uh, engagement around the issue at stake um, and its capacity to incite repeated or at least um, amplified. Uh, engagement. Uh, this is why clickbaity news uh, dominates uh, our content feeds and why misinformation uh, spreads at its best uh, in the form of a meme. The algorithms that translate these interactions into data are far from being unbiased and uh, we have to uh, keep in mind uh, that different modes of platform action um, are involved uh, in the negotiation um, of what counts uh, as relevant uh, within a specific uh, temporal framework. Uh, one very important uh, platform uh, that merges uh, time and value is Google. Uh, what Google gives us is an algorithmically driven rank list of stories uh, seen uh, through a lens of recommended pages uh, and, and their features um, visual content. Uh, so when we deal with uh, Google's vision of uh, controversial events uh, by, uh, by comparing uh, here images uh, uh, ranked over time, uh, we also deal uh, with the patterns in prioritization of sources. Um, we do not really ask where does this image come from, um, but how is this image featured by this specific source at this specific period of time? And repurposing this characteristic means to understand how, when, and why the issue at hand uh, transforms uh, in the mainstream perception. What you see here is an, is an older story. It's a story of Ibizagate, uh, a political scandal around uh, Austria's right-wing uh, politician and former deputy chancellor, Heinz Christian Strache. Uh, and this story is told uh, through Google's uh, daily recommendation um, of, uh, of the top uh, five uh, Ibiza Gate memes uh, in the course of 15 days, uh, starting with the day on which uh, 
the secretly uh, filmed uh, video revealed uh, Strache's uh, uh, drunken uh, and also illegal uh, promises uh, to an alleged uh, Russian oligarch niece. Uh, in itself, this type of visuality suggests uh, how the attribution of responsibility for what happened uh, to Austrian uh, politics uh, in, in Ibiza two years ago uh, kind of traveled uh, from uh, one Austrian government representative to another. Uh, the more information was revealed over time, the more political actors became involved. Um, the more attention uh, was generated, uh, resulting uh, in means uh, supporting headlines uh, about the collapse um, of the Austrian uh, coalition government. Yet almost more interesting uh, than the images uh, were the image sources uh, attributed per date by Google recommendation. And what we see here is the pattern in which uh, quality media uh, such as uh, Der Standard uh, were persistent over time, promoting their stories uh, through visuality that comes uh, from, uh, I think here, Instagram and other social media. So when we look at this type uh, of uh, visual storytelling, it's important uh, to keep in mind that what Google gives us here is not exactly a historical uh, perspective, rather the specificity of content is very much connected uh, to the rank of sources assigned to the pages when Google algorithms uh, determine that it would be relevant uh, to do so. This is why my final observation is that content exposure is not all there is. Uh, the analysis of images that score high in terms of their uh, interconnectedness or also in terms of uh, the count of likes, reblogs, and comments is only one way um, of platform seeing. Engagement is more than engagement metrics. Uh, it is about uh, uh, the shifts uh, in relations of association, relevance, um, and visibility. This is kind of also um, why I really find it interesting to explore how images connect to and disconnect from one another based on their different uh, digital uh, properties. Uh, both uh, dynamics involve all kinds of communicative, subcultural and uh, experiential qualities, as well as multiple layers of uh, mediation, creating uh, these uh, uh, hybrid networks uh, that memes uh, derive from. So we know that uh, digital images are dynamic artifacts. Uh, at the same time, they also uh, draw together embeddedness and uh, multi-sidedness. Uh, they can circulate and transform within platform and issue specific contexts uh, to the same extent as they can appear as variations um, of the same image uh, across multiple sites of the web. Taking the shape of a network, uh, such connections translate in relations of proximity and distance. Um, so in, in this uh, particular context that I will explain in a second, uh, more specific images and sites of circulation are less connected, while what we see as, as the core of the network um, are these uh, spreadable formations uh, of memes uh, shared between uh, different uh, platforms uh, and uh, meme um, uh, repositories. Um, again, this network is not uh, about the question, uh, where do these images come from? Instead, it shows uh, um, like the peak of circulation uh, of, of a very particular platform uh, related issue, the issue of uh, Tumblr's uh, infamous uh, porn ban uh, in 20. 18, uh, also known as Tumblr Purge, um, which uh, has uh, cost uh, the company uh, more than, um, I think, uh, half of its uh, user base. Uh, the entry points uh, for data extraction in this research uh, were censorship uh, related uh, hashtags uh, that assembled users' disapproval of uh, the new uh, safe for work. 
uh, Tumblr and the new uh, algorithm um, that was uh, implemented to combat any type uh, of adult content um, on Tumblr, uh, including uh, images uh, and GIFs uh, uh, of what was uh, uh, in an official announcement uh, defined uh, as uh, female uh, presenting nipples. This algorithm was not well trained. Uh, it was flagging images as porn uh, that were anything uh, but uh, pornographic. Uh, it had uh, almost no uh, impact uh, on, on the swarms uh, of uh, porn bots uh, uh, populating the site, and, and it took uh, an article uh, of its own to disentangle uh, uh, and understand uh, these relations as they were mediated through uh, interactions of hashtag publics. Uh, but what about other ways in which the images relate uh, to one another? What about uh, their uh, shared uh, visual qualities? Um, this is my favorite uh, visualization. It results uh, from one of the projects uh, pitched uh, during uh, the data sprints last year. Uh, and its main purpose is to highlight the variations in scenarios of Tumblr purge uh, minification. Uh, these memes do not just come from from somewhere. I mean, uh, they do, but they also uh, relate um, very specifically to other forms of visual uh, engagement uh, on Tumblr. Um, and what they do is actually reimagine uh, uh, all the platform uh, interventions uh, in user cultures uh, during uh, this process uh, of uh, Tumblr pur purge. Um, these Interventions are documented here uh, in an image plot uh, that was uh, transformed uh, into a GIF uh, to showcase uh, the rhythm of Tumblr censorship through screenshots of Tumblr notifications during and after uh, the implementation of the new community guidelines. Uh, the red lines um, uh, represent content uh, that was um, uh, mistakenly uh, flagged as porn in like most of the cases. Uh, but what we also see is that while Tumblr was doing all the flagging, uh, users kept receiving uh, notifications um, about the new um, uh, followers and most of these uh, followers were actually uh, porn bots. Um, this is a zoom in view on, on some of the content uh, that was flagged, uh, screenshotted and reshared, and uh, that by no means was exclusively uh, pornographic. Rather, uh, the images uh, that received uh, the red flag uh, included, uh, like here, cats, uh, cartoons, fandom art, sculptures, memes, um, and yeah, sometimes uh, some laundry uh, uh, models. Uh, but without uh, any female or male uh, nipples exposed. Um, and actually extracting meaning uh, out of the ways in which memes and all these um, other types of visual content uh, relate uh, to one another uh, was uh, the main uh, challenge uh, of this project. When it comes to uh, large and hybrid collections of images, um, and I mean, we mostly deal with large and hybrid collections of images. Uh, locating mimetic engagement is not exactly um, an easy going uh, uh, process. Um, enriching platform data through uh, machine vision based uh, techniques of tagging images um, according to their content elements uh, can be uh, one very useful uh, way of understanding uh, what's going on uh, in your uh, data set over time. And, and here we uh, experimented with uh, Google Vision API um, uh, labels uh, through uh, Bernhard Readers uh, and Andre Mintz uh, um, Python uh, script, uh, uh, Mintz Factor, uh, to be able to do so. Uh, yet more for, for more uh, specific analytical tasks uh, involving uh, uh, like fonts, uh, texts, lines, uh, fictional characters, photography, 
Um, so in other words, memes that, as you can see, like dominated uh, this uh, data set, um, uh, the pure labeling of, of content uh, is simply uh, too generic. Um, uh, Google is, is really uh, good uh, in recognizing um, uh, content. Uh, um, uh, here, just as an example, it's like assigns uh, three different combinations um, of uh, labels uh, to a surprise Pikachu meme. It, it recognizes a, a fictional character, which is fair enough. Um, uh, then something related to cartoons and games, um, and then uh, an organism uh, featuring green and yellow um, colors. And <laughs> the colors are actually um, always uh, like almost the only uh, thing that is uh, unambiguous. And all of these can be uh, valuable, uh, but it also requires uh, specification. And if we use Google Vision to specify uh, this information uh, through web entities or specific references to an image obtained from the web, um, from the archives here, such as uh, Know Your Meme, and even uh, if we then will be able uh, to recognize uh, Darth Vader and here Lisa Simpson and uh, the specific artworks instead of uh, uh, fictional characters, even then we still need to address uh, the issues of interpretation. This is a classical case illustrating that access to data uh, does not mean easy access to, to meaning. Uh, entanglements of digital images uh, might be rather straightforward in terms of their content uh, and format uh, or, or form, uh, but definitely not uh, in terms uh, of their stance uh, to use uh, the terminology of uh, Limor Schiffman. So when we visualize and analyze uh, these relations through data uh, that we extract from social media platforms, and this is what we are going to practice a lot uh, uh, during this week, uh, we create uh, network abstractions uh, uh, that capture ongoing engagement uh, through more or less uh, static uh, uh, formations of nodes and edges. And, and this requires multiple uh, perspectives uh, on the same data set and multiple uh, visualizations uh, that will uh, become your main analytical devices in the process. Um, and data in this specific way of understanding is never uh, self-evident. Uh, it is a matter of construction and fabrication. Uh, in the process of analysis, it, it requires careful ethical uh, consideration of what exactly uh, we reproduce uh, for research purposes. Uh, it requires uh, collective efforts uh, of interpretation, uh, negotiations uh, of, of your analytical decisions, uh, questioning uh, of your uh, own research uh, backgrounds, and sometimes like really intense uh, discussions uh, with, uh, with your uh, collaborators, which is always uh, fun, uh, by the way. Uh, and in this sense, um, and also keeping uh, uh, the shortness of the short talk uh, in mind, um, I also want to welcome you uh, to, to this new and uh, crazy online uh, edition of Smart Data Sprint. Um, yes, uh, talk to one another. Uh, Try not to only stare uh, into, into your screens, uh, uh, meet friends, uh, build networks, uh, not metaphorically, like materially, and uh, yes, have fun. Thank you very much for your attention.